Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you're well. It's me. <laughs> I know it's been a long time so you're probably like, who's that? Yeah, it's me, it's Bridget. And I am standing here in my healthy kitchen, hoping you are amazing, hoping you are well, hoping you kind of missed me a little bit because I know I've been gone for a while, but just I'm so happy to be back. Uh, it has been a long time since we've done a live cooking class. It's been so long, I forgot how to do it. So um, bear with me if things don't quite go the way they normally or they used to go. It's because I've had to relearn how to do do live cooking classes because it's been ages but it doesn't matter the main thing is we're back the main thing is we now can talk to each other we're doing a live if you're watching this live you know you can ask questions I have the the, the handsome and ever amazing Mahi who is um, keeping an eye on proceedings so if you've got any questions anything you want to know Mahi is there um, I'm seeing if I can if I can see oh I can I can see I can see comments it's very exciting it is very exciting so let's get into it because I will go blah 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 for too long and then people tell me I talk too much so let's get into it if you're not watching this live welcome welcome to my kitchen um, today we will be doing something that's very um, much a timely recipe because it's Easter um, in a couple of days for us here in Sydney New Zealand, Australia, whatever part of the world you're in, in a couple of days time we will be having Easter. The rest of the world are about a day behind us. But because we're having Easter, I thought I would kick off or reignite our live cooking classes with a hot cross bun cooking class. And this hot these hot cross buns are of course gluten free, sugar free and dairy free, but they are also a recipe that is included in my soon to be released cookbook number six I know right cookbook number six which is going to be released um, we finished doing the photographs just like yesterday photographs are done um, which means that the book is now with the editor and we're hoping to get that book out to you guys or at least on pre-sale by June what are we now we're coming into April tomorrow April tomorrow so major not long to go very very soon and I have a name for you guys as well the book by the way is going to be called Moorish, Moorish from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. So Moorish, which is, I think it's close to 200 recipes, healthy treats, including this hot cross bun recipe. So you're getting the, you're getting like this, this, this new look at this hot cross bun recipe. I've done hot cross buns before. This is my favorite version by far. It is amazing. Enough talking, let's get into the recipe. So the first thing we want to do with our hot cross buns is, of course, we've taken out the gluten, all that sort of stuff, but they are a yeasted bun because we want to get that lovely rise out of them. So I've got my scales here ready to go. I'm going to pop on my jug because I'm going to um, activate the yeast. So you want to make sure when you're activating the yeast, you want to make sure that your water is lukewarm or at blood temperature. So it's sitting at around about 40 degrees. Excuse me for a second. I'm getting my warm water. <laughs> it was that way. Um, the water is sitting at around about 40 degrees, which is blood temperature. 40 degrees Celsius is about 102, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And into my jug, I'm going to put 325 mils of warm water which is about 11 ounces of warm remember lukewarm water now the reason why you want it to be lukewarm and it's really important it's not too hot and not too cold now the reason you want it to be lukewarm is because this is where yeast loves to grow this is yeast's ideal growing area or temperature zone is blood temperature and if you put your finger into it it's like hopping into a warm bath so that's what you're looking for. Put that finger in, feels like a warm bath, you're good to go. So if you don't have it, you could, I mean, you could use a thermometer, but you know what, what blood temperature is. I know for my mum, she would always go and drip it onto her wrist when she was like running the bath for the babies to see that the water wasn't too hot or too cold. And it gives you a nice indication of where you want to be. So a warm bath, 325 mils, which is about 11 ounces of water. We're now going to go to our yeast. We're using activated activated instant yeast and you want to pop in two heaped tablespoons like don't be shy here two heaped tablespoons of our instant active yeast goes in and then we also need a sweetener 
a sweetener to help to activate that yeast because the yeast needs that little bit of sweetener otherwise nothing's going to happen right now even though we've got our warm water we need the next stage which is the sweetener and the sweetener that i'm using today happens to be you guys all know what this is sweet as fiber syrup lovely way to activate your yeast and we're going to put in a tablespoon of our lovely fiber syrup is going to go in there just give it a quick little mix around just like that and then pop them off to the side i love that smell by the way that yeast oh so good just reminds me of baking i mean this is baking at its core right popped it off to the side we will come back to that in a second we're going to let that ferment so while that's fermenting we can start to prepare the dry ingredients so um as you may see i have my little um mixer here you can yes ideally do it with a mixer but you don't have to if you don't have a mixer you can do it by hand as well with um, quite a bit of this elbow grease <laughs> and quite a bit of uh, wooden spoon action you can do it but eh, you know what i've got one of these so i'm going to do it in there so i'm going to measure all my ingredients straight into my bowl because it just it's so much easier as we all know so much easier so let's start with Probably the main, as far as I'm concerned, the main ingredient. And that is, I'm um, using a nut flour that's going into there. I'm using almond flour. You could use almond meal. You could use sunflower flour. You could use walnut flour. You could basically use any nut or seed flour that you want to. I like to use almond meal. It's quite, um, it's quite, what's the best way to describe it? It's quite um, easy to mix with lots and lots of flavors. But for some of you, I know that almond meal is um, something you can't have. You're allergic to it. So you can use any nut or seed flour of your choosing. And we're going to put into here 180 grams, which is around about six, just over 6.3 ounces of almond flour, almond meal, or whatever nut or seed flour of your choosing goes into there. A little bit more. Perfect. I'm also going to be adding in a gluten-free flour blend. You can either choose one from the supermarket if you want to, or you can make my gluten-free flour blend. I can't even remember what that recipe is now. Some of my, one of you guys might know <laughs> uh, where the recipe is for that. I can't remember. It's obviously going to be in the new book, Moorish. Of course it is. I just can't remember what book it currently sits, what ebook it currently sits in. Um, so I do have my own gluten-free flour blend. If not, you can buy one from the supermarket. And to our almond flour, oops, there we go, put it onto the right one. Just, I'm just zeroing it off so it's easy to measure on my scales. We're going to be adding in 200 grams of our gluten-free flour blend, which is 7 ounces. It's going to go in there. Let's give it a bit of a hand, shall we? Thank you. 200 grams. So we've got this lovely mix going on here. And after much testing, I've discovered that the combination of these two, a gluten-free flour blend, and the um, nut flour, it's really, really good for our hot cross bump. So 200 grams, 7 ounces of our flour goes in there. We are also going to be adding in a little bit of our pure as inulin powder. So the inulin is there. A um, couple of reasons why we're adding inulin. We're adding 4 tablespoons, by the way. So there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, inulin, as we know, is a dietary fiber. So we are adding fiber to our hot cross buns it's pretty cool that's number one number two is um this is also a prebiotic so by eating your hot cross buns once they're done you'll be feeding your healthy gut bacteria with a prebiotic amazing and number three the reason why i'm adding inulin is because it has that natural sweetness to it not too sweet but just has that little bit of sweetness i like to i like to say that this um, tastes like fairy floss or candy floss it's amazing as you guys know um so um, we're adding that in there just for that little bit of sweetness pinch of salt why not pinch of salt mineral salt goes in there and then what we want to do next is just give it a little bit of a blend just a bit of a mix and then i'm going to pop it onto our little cake mixer here i am using what's known as a dough hook <laughs> it looks like captain it, exactly right if you're a pirate this would be ideal it's also really good for making bread you can either use it if, if you're a pirate or you can use it to make bread and we're just going to turn it on just and let it gently begin to do its thing while it's doing its thing i'm going to have a look at our 
yeast. You can see already that the yeast is beginning to just get a little bit of a head on it. A bit like, you know, um, when you freshly pour a beer. That's kind of what you're looking for. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you don't have to, you don't have to do that to active yeast. I always do it. The reason, but, reason I always do it is because I, I need to know, like, physically that the yeast is actually active. And if I was to put it straight into here, which you can do, I don't know whether that yeast is going to work. I could waste all those ingredients. I would rather check first to make sure my yeast is alive, which I can see it is because it's bubbling, and then put it in later. So that's why we activate our yeast. So that's working well. Let's look at the other ingredients, the other wet ingredients we need to use. Turn you off your dish. So I've got two eggs here, um, which we're going to add in. Two large eggs. You, If you don't want to use an egg, um, like if you're egg free for whatever reason, you could um, try using a chia or a flaxseed egg instead. Um, Mahi, could you Google chia seed, so flaxseed egg, so people know the quantities for that and maybe share a link? I, from memory, I don't, because I use eggs, I, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I believe to make like the equivalent of one egg if, you don't, if you're egg free. You, you take one tablespoon of chia seeds yep. and then you put in two tablespoons of water. Three tablespoons. Oh, three. There you go. So, five minutes. So exactly. So if you want to use chia seeds instead of eggs because you're egg free, you take one tablespoon of chia seeds, yep. you mix that with three tablespoons of water, yep. and then you let it sit for five minutes. Obviously, you've got two eggs in this, so you're going to be using two tablespoons of chia seeds and six tablespoons of water let it sit for five minutes or come into a gel and then you can just continue like normal so that's if you want to go completely egg free i know there's a few people that watch us that don't or can't eat eggs but for us eggy guys give it a bit of a whisk just like that and then we're going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar just a tablespoon oh no no a teaspoon <laughs> Not a tablespoon. That would taste terrible. It's a teaspoon. <laughs> oh, that much. It's a teaspoon of apple, which is about five mils of apple cider vinegar. Give that a bit of a stir. The next, we are also going to add in a little bit of oil. Now, I am using an extra virgin olive oil. You could also use coconut oil, or you could use avocado oil as well, which, as you guys know, these are our healthy fats, good for our brain health two tablespoons of your um, chosen oil goes into there and now it's just kind of time to mix everything together so we've got our our dry ingredients blended blended good there with our captain hook we are now going to take our bubbly yeast which is looking pretty good you see that like a frothy beer remember that frothy beer like you've just poured a lovely head of beer that is going to go into there it usually takes around about five to ten minutes to get that kind of you know activation happening when it comes to your yeast use your spatula to make sure you get all the goodies out all the goodies go in there so that's our good start Let's go with that, give it a bit of a blend. And now, once it's blending, we're going to take the egg mixture as well, pop that in. I might throw caution to the wind and go faster. See how we feel about that? I don't feel that good, so we need to scrape it down. Scrape it down. Bit of a scrape. Here we go. Good. We don't need to do this much. It's just some kind of a light blend. But what you will find is chances are you need to assist it on its way by just mixing the flour off the side as much as you can. Let's try it again. Better. Much, much, much better. So while that's doing that, let me turn it down a little bit. Noisy. We can consider, there's, there's a couple more ingredients that we need to add into this. And this is what, in my opinion, creates the hot cross bun that we know and love. You can't do without this. And that is, you ready? <laughs> Three spices, all right? You've got to have, it's got to be a spice bun mixture. So the spices that I have today that we're going to be adding in, I have nutmeg, I have a cinnamon, 
and I have allspice. Now, um, allspice is not to be confused with mixed spice. Allspice is um, from um, a pimento. So it's, a, it's, a, it's got a different, it's almost a little bit peppery. It's a really interesting spice, very popular in Caribbean cooking. So we're going to be adding allspice. Let me grab a teaspoon. So allspice is one teaspoon. We can add it in now. It goes into our mix. Next, we're going to be adding cinnamon. Cinnamon is two teaspoons. Cinnamon can handle, you know, the, the mix can handle a good amount of cinnamon in there. With two teaspoons of cinnamon. Nutmeg's a little bit stronger, so I just reserve nutmeg a little bit, and we're just putting half a teaspoon of nutmeg goes in there as well. And as well as that, you need to also consider whether you're going to make your hot cross buns a fruit-filled hot cross bun or not. I'm going with fruit filled and I'm going to be adding, and because Mahi, Mahi loves them, these are his favourite, I'm adding in sultanas, but not just any sultana, let me tell you. These sultanas that I have found, I actually found them in Costco, they are organic, they have no added salt, they've got no sulfates, and sulfates are usually put into dried fruit to preserve them, and sulfates can be very, very bad on the gut. So they're things you want to avoid at all costs. There's no sulfates and there's also no added sugar. Sadly, a lot of dried fruit that you get on the market has a lot of added sugar. This does not. So whatever dried fruit you choose, I'm, what's it, I'm choosing sultanas. You could do raisins. You could do apricots chopped up. You could do dried figs. It's really your choice what dried fruit you add. Or don't add them if you don't like dried fruit. Some people don't. I do. So 150 grams, which is about 5.2 ounces of these wonderful organic sultanas. Australian sultanas. They're actually from South Australia. They're from the Murray River. They're from, I even know where they come from. I was so impressed when I found these. They are wonderful. All right. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Get things happening. It's really, really sticky, which is absolutely fine. But I'm pretty content that it's starting to blend in well. But my good old spatula always comes in handy to go down and to scrape it off the sides of the bowl because you want to make sure everything is really well blended. Give it another mix quickly. So the next thing you want to do is you want to create, create more of a dough. So you go to your good old uh, gluten-free flour blend. And what I want you to do is one tablespoon at a time, add it into your bowl and mix. And what you're looking for is you're looking for this dough to begin to almost form like a ball. It'll get drier and drier every time you add a tablespoon. But keep on observing, keep on mixing, keep on adding until it starts to form quite a nice firm dough. Good. Now the reason why in the recipe I have said to add, um, you know, to add it one tablespoon at a time is because when it comes to flour blends, flour blends are all completely different and some are more absorbent, some are less absorbent. So for some of you, depending on what flour blend you decide to use, whether it's my one, whether it's a supermarket one, you'll find that the amount of flour that you need in order for it to come into a sticky dough is different to other people's flour blends. Hence why at this point in time, we go slowly and we just add a tablespoon at a time until it comes together into an I'm running out of flour, into a nice firm dough. My hay said to me, do I need to get you some more flour, darling? I said, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. What's that? One teaspoon. So keep on adding enough flour until it becomes a lovely firm dough. I've run out of flour, so I'm going to be using almond flour, which is okay as well. What we're trying to do is just making a lovely firm dough for us to be able to roll it into balls. So what you're looking for as you add 
a tablespoon at a time as the dough will start to come together and kind of clump around the, um, the, the hook and then you know you're onto a good thing. You might have to add an extra 100, 100 grams. Who knows, right? Like I said, every flour is different in absorbency. So it's all going to be different depending on what flour you choose to use. And obviously my flour was very unabsorbent, a uh, very absorbent, unabsorbent because I'm adding a lot more flour, but that's okay. I get bigger dough, I get bigger balls. Rather inappropriate, I know, but <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, it's coming together good. Liking it. Liking it good. So once it starts to really kind of stick around, you know you're onto a good thing. Like I said, you could add an extra 100 grams of flour at this point. That's perfectly okay. It'll start to pull away from the sides of the bowl as well, which is really important. And it will just be amazing. I can't wait. It's so incredible. All right. Looking good. Thank you very much. Alright, so once you have it at this point here where it kind of starts to cling to the hook or to your wooden spoon, which is where you want to be, what you now um, can do is start to form it into, um, into balls, which is not as hard as it may appear. So you can take all this mixture out of your mix of your um, blender and pop it onto a clean bench and then begin to form it into balls. You may need to put a little bit of extra flour, which is literally all my flour, onto your board. And what you're going to do with your mix is you're going to keep on moving it and rolling it and kind of playing with it until it doesn't stick to you or your board. That's what you're looking for. So you know, be quite generous in the in the um, dusting of your board until you can, if you can get it into a shape like that, you know it's 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 perfect. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get it into and, you, and out of this mix. By the way, you can make up to 14 hot cross buns. It's quite a generous mix. Um, I usually make a baker's dozen because um, I kind of like them around about that shape, as you can see, over that size. But, you know, you could make them smaller, like little mini hot cross buns and make even 20 of them. So it's a really generous dough um, and you can get quite a lot out of it. So what you kind of want to do, I'll show you with these two guys, is, you know, take all your mix out, put it onto your board. I would do it, but I don't have enough flour to show you guys how it's going to work. Um, you know, make sure your board is really dusted well, your bench is dusted well. And then taking up your, your mix, you want to create your two little balls, or your, sorry, your 12 little balls. The best way to do it is, I'll show you this little trick, this is a really cool little trick. So you, you, you portion it all out into kind of even sized, you know, lumps of dough. And then to get them into the perfectly sized balls, what you then need to do is just dust your bench again with flour. You see, I'm using almond flour. And what I'm doing here, and this is kind of like the trick to creating the perfect even dinner rolls, is I'm, I've, I've, I mean, like that, it obviously doesn't look like a ball, but it's quite easy to bring it into a lovely ball as you mold it into the shape of a ball, but to get it perfectly round, is I'm just beginning to gently roll it on my bench using that flour there to make sure it doesn't stick. If it starts to stick, add a little bit more flour. And as I'm rolling it on the ball, I'm being very gentle and not applying any pressure by the way. Being really, really gentle. And I'm beginning, as you can notice, I'm beginning to cut my fingers to create almost like a claw, like that sort of shape. And as I'm doing that, rolling with, the, you know, with my palm, and then I'm beginning to cut my fingers like a claw. And as I'm doing that, what you'll notice is you'll begin to create this almost perfect round ball shape by doing that. Can you see that? I'll do it again so you can see. So you start off with a flat whatever, it can be a square, doesn't really matter, and then you begin to roll. If you need a little bit more flour because it sticks to the bench, or you put a bit more flour, and then begin to gently, you know, this just I'm just using my palm now, and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to begin to cup it like a claw, and as I'm cupping it like a claw, what you are then left with is this perfectly rolled ball of dough, which makes, by the way, 
the most perfect hot cross bun. So once you've done that to all your dough, and as I was saying, I would normally take it out and show you guys, I've just run out of flour, so I can't show you what that looks like, doesn't matter, because you're gonna do that with all of your dough. So times 12 to 14, you're gonna get those lovely little rolls. So let's get rid of this, we don't need this anymore. Where am I gonna put you? I'll put you over here. Oh, I can't put you over there because you don't fit. I'm gonna put you there instead. How about that? You can't, yep, perfect. So now that we've got our balls, we would then take our baking sheet, which is here. Our baking sheet has some non-stick baking paper on it. And then you would put all your balls on here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, depending on how many you, you can get out of that. And you cover that with a clean tea towel. You cover them all. And you leave this to sit in the warmest part of your kitchen until those balls double in size. So that may take 30 minutes, that may take an hour, depends on obviously how warm your kitchen is for a start, and also how active your yeast is. But the way I, I sneaky do it is I have a, a, a function on my oven that is a proving function, which is basically preset at 40 degrees, which is Celsius, which is 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the perfect temperature environment for the yeast to rot, to raise and the bread to prove. So that will double in size in about 20 minutes in my oven. If you don't have that capabilities, as I was saying, just put it in the warmest spot that you have in your house, cover it in that tea towel until those balls double in size. Once they have doubled in size, you're gonna move on to the next. Wow, that's a really dirty bench. <laughs> that was not expected. That's a really dirty bench, Bruce. That's all right, that's why you got one of these. So once they have doubled in size, your next job, I forgot I made hot cross buns earlier and didn't clean my bed. Your next job is to make the things that go with the hot cross buns or on top of them. So there's a glaze we need to make, which is just a, a like an egg wash. And there's also the crust as well. So those are really easy to make. They're not hard at all, in fact. So to make the glaze, which is, as I was saying, is literally an egg wash, which is what I have here. You just need an egg yolk with one tablespoon of whatever non-dairy milk or cream you want to use. You could use coconut cream, you could use coconut milk, you could use hemp milk, you could use almond milk, oat milk, whatever you want to do. So one egg yolk mixed with one tablespoon of your chosen non-dairy milk will make your glaze. And once your balls have doubled in size, you take a pastry brush and then you just brush them all over the top to give obviously the buns a really nice color once they have when they're cooking so that's the first thing you'll be doing while your balls are doubling in size so you're going to be making your glaze the second thing that you want to think about doing is to make the cross mixture it's really easy actually to make the cross mixture really really easy even when you've got dirty 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 hands to make the cross mixture so all you need to do is Gluten-free flour, which I have none left of. <laughs> Let's pretend we're making the glaze mix. So the glaze mix is simple. The glaze mix is, someone's saying, is it self-raising gluten-free flour or plain? It is plain flour. You don't need to use self-raising flour when you're using um, yeast. So you don't have to worry about self-raising flour. So the, the, um, the, actual, <laughs> the actual cross mixture, as I was saying, it's very easy to make. And all you need to do is to put um, into your bowl, you're going to put in 40 grams, which is about 1.4 ounces of plain gluten-free flour blend. To that, you're also going to add in uh, 20 grams of powdered erythritol. I'll show you how to do that. So you know that we have... Um, L0 as sugar erythritol, right? And at the moment, if you were to look at L0 as sugar erythritol, it's quite granular. It looks kind of similar to, you know, like white sugar um, or caster sugar. So it's quite granulated. We want to form that into a powder because it's going to dissolve a lot easier to make our cross mixture. Really, like basically, we're going to be making icing sugar or powdered sugar. Simple to do. All you need is one of these. This is a spice grinder also known as a coffee grinder. You're gonna add in, not with a fork, but I use a spoon, 20 grams, which is about two tablespoons, of our zero as sugar, pure erythritol. And then you're just gonna blend it. And I'll show you what happens, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. 
a couple of seconds. Wow, did you see that? That, that's cool. I love that little haze. That means we have powdered sugar. And now it looks like icing sugar with after a couple of seconds. And basically all that, what that means is that we're able to mix it into the, remember the gluten-free flour that you put in here? So it's 40 grams of gluten-free flour. It's 20 grams of um, erythritol, two tablespoons. And then it is 30 mils of plain water. Stir that around with a fork. And what you'll get is an, a, a perfect consistency for piping your crosses onto the rolls. So once the rolls are proved and they're doubled in size, glaze them and take your mixture, which is your, your, um, your cross mixture there, either you can drizzle it on if you want to just be a bit rough with the crosses, or you can put it into a little piping bag and you can pipe your crosses on and then you pop your buns into the oven set at 200 degrees celsius which is 390 degrees fahrenheit and they're going to go into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes and what you're left with where's my here's one i prepared earlier hence why the beach was dirty and i ran out of flour <laughs> here's some i prepared earlier dun, 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 dun. there they are don't they look good aren't they awesome looking so these beauties here, you can see the cross on top. I mean, I'm not that great with the cross making. I just want to make sure I've got the cross on top. But um, they are wonderful. So if you want to know how to check whether your buns are done, is after about the 25 minute mark, you know, have a pick one up, you know, obviously with a towel because it'll be really, really hot and just gently tap the bottom. And what you're listening for is a hollowness to the tap because that is telling us that that has cooked through really well. So pick it up, give it a bit of a tap. If you're feeling, a, if you're hearing a hollowness, you know it's done. Of course, you're gonna get this lovely glaze on top of it. Let's cut into one so you can see what's happening inside of them as well. Here it is, our, there it is. This is, by the way, the third batch that I've made today, hence why I've run out of flour. <laughs> we had a bit of a mishap earlier on, so I had to make three batches. All right, so let's have a bit of a cut through. Oh, God. They feel so good. And there you go. But what I love about this, it is so spongy. It's like bread. It's like bread, but has way more flavor. And it's way better for you. So these, of course, are, oh my gosh, look at that. Look how soft and moist it is. These are amazing served straight out of the oven. You know, just hot out of the oven. But they hold up really well if you make them in advance and then serve them the next day. I mean, these were cooked probably about 12 hours ago. And as you can see, we still have a really lovely sponginess to them. They haven't hardened at all. They're just absolutely phenomenal. Now, by the way, if you would like a copy of this recipe, we will be sharing this recipe on our blog tomorrow. Um, Mahi said he's going to share the link. I'm looking at him. He's going to share the link on Facebook. Aren't you, dear? Go, yeah, he's going to share the link with you guys on Facebook tomorrow. They will, will be available on our blog. We still can't share recipes on Facebook. We've got to send you guys to a blog, but that's okay. The recipe will be on the blog tomorrow, but it will also, of course, be in the book Moorish, which I'm still working hard to get delivered to you guys in the next couple of months, which is super exciting. So lots of things happening here in my kitchen, here everywhere. But can I please just wish you a very wonderful Easter wherever you are in the world whether you're making hot cross buns or not I hope you're well and I hope you stay safe and you know just a happy Easter to you and your family as I was saying it's really really good to be back it's really good to be back in the kitchen I look forward to sharing lots more amazing recipes with you I have so much to share with you it's just bursting out of my brain and I can't wait to do it so please everyone have a wonderful Easter stay well and stay safe Keep an eye out tomorrow on Facebook for the link to the recipe if you would like it in written form. I would love to see your experiments when it comes to these hot cross buns. Maybe you do them with chocolate chips. Maybe you do them with apricots. Maybe you do them with figs. Whatever it is you decide to do, I would love to see the results. Please share your photos with us. We love to be inspired by you as well. So thank you guys. It has been a pleasure to be live with you again. And I look forward to the next video. Take care, everyone. Have a great Easter. Bye.